So I'm currently in Tucson, Arizona after flying down from Montreal, Canada this morning via Dallas. And this is the hotel I'll be staying in for the next few days, just doing a bit of self-quarantine before we fly back to Australia. And the reason I was in Montreal last week was to conduct my annual recurrent training on the Bombardier Global Express simulator. And here you can see it in action. Now this is a four day course with two days of ground school, a theory exam, and then two simulator sessions over two days. During that time, we practice many emergencies, single engine climb outs, engine fire, engine failure, depressurization, pilot incapacitation, failure of landing gear or flap systems. And during that training, we practice the necessary responses to each of those emergencies. And this is an annual requirement by the FAA to maintain captain status on the aircraft. And the end result is to get this pilot proficiency card, there's my name, with the ATP license, qualified as pilot in command on the BBD 700 with HUD and EVS. So that's my certification again for another 12 months to operate as captain on the aircraft. So one of the main reasons Flat Earth claims caught my attention is that many of them relate to pilots and the way they fly around the Earth. One of the claims I've seen many times over the years by Flat Earthers is that pilots never account for the curvature of the Earth. This is 100% false. Instrument approach charts do account for the curvature of the Earth and that's what we're going to look at in this video. And here is an example of one of those claims made by a flat earther who goes by the name of Vertical Freedom the Vegan. Down here he states all flight planning and aerial navigation is based always on a flat motionless plane. Curvature or spin is never accounted for ever. We'll show in this video that that is a completely false statement. Now this person was the pilot that was interviewed by Paul on the plane and he claimed to hold a commercial fixed wing license with a Gulfstream G650 rating. That is not the case. His FAA record shows only a private pilot fixed wing license with no jet rating. To make matters worse, one of his former employers turned up on a different video confirming that he is full of rubbish and whilst a helicopter pilot, I doubt his fixed wing credentials. I employed him for four months. Sadly, he had to leave and not by his own choice. So that raises the question, why do these flat earth pilots have to tell lies about their qualifications and ratings as a pilot? The FAA record is a public database so anyone falsifying their claims can be easily caught out. Just ask Bob Nodell. So one of the airports we operate to during the simulator training is Zurich, Switzerland. And the reason for that is due to the high terrain the complexity of the instrument approach and specifically the missed approach segment which is what you do if you don't get visual you have to carry out a missed approach now this gives the instructors the opportunity to put the pressure on during critical phases of the flight what we're looking at here is the rnav gnss runway 14 this is based on gps and the altimeter of the aircraft providing the 3d picture This is the ILS or localizer runway 14. It's an approach to the same runway, but this one is based on a radio beam being projected up at a precise three degree angle and the aircraft is flying down that radio beam. There's a subtle difference in how they are calculated and this is because of the Earth's curvature. So we'll take a look at a number of FAA documents relating to the calculation of these instrument approaches. And this is order 8260.54 alpha. If we go down to the definition, it will give us the radius of the earth used in the calculations. Down here, paragraph R. The TERPS constant for the mean radius of the Earth for spherical calculations in feet is 2089537 feet. When we convert that to miles, we get 
90537 divided by 5280 3956 miles for the radius of the earth now if we go down to page 245 we have a nice diagram that explains the subtle difference between the final approach fix for a non-precision approach and an ILS approach. Now here we can see it is depicting the curvature of the Earth. Obviously this is not to scale. It is then showing that the intermediate segment minimum altitude is following that curvature. Here is the runway. Because the instrument landing system is a fixed straight line three degrees from the runway, it will reach the intermediate segment minimum altitude at this point. Because the non-precision approach is actually curved and following the curvature of the Earth, it is going to result in a precision final approach fix that is at a different position. And it then shows the relevant formula for calculating the PFAF. This is for the ILS, the fixed radio beam, and this is for the non-precision approach. So we can see right away that the radius of the Earth, the Earth's curvature, is absolutely factored into these instrument approach charts. And that means every time a pilot flies an instrument approach, he is taking into account the curvature of the Earth. And I'll post links to these documents in the description below, but here is another worthwhile paragraph. 98. Precise Final Approach Fix, PFAF. The PFAF is a calculated WGS-84 geographic position located on the final approach course where the designed vertical path, NPA procedures, that's non-precision approach, or glide path for precision approach procedures, intercepts the intermediate segment altitude glide path intercept altitude. The PFAF marks the beginning of the final approach segment, the calculation of the distance from landing threshold point to precision final approach fix includes the earth curvature. It states it right there. And here is another diagram showing that the reference plane for this three degree approach angle changes due to the curvature of the earth. Again, it's an exaggerated diagram, but it is showing that the three degrees of the glide path is based on the reference plane, which is changing according to the position around the Earth's curvature. So we can see very clearly in the FAA documents that the instrument approach procedures do factor in the curvature of the Earth, and they use different formulas based on the type of the approach. So this claim by flat earthers that pilots never account for the curvature of the earth is 100% false. If you encounter a flat earther making a claim or a similar claim to this, please feel free to link them to this video and tell them that they are absolutely wrong. And I'll just leave you with some footage at Montreal Airport this morning and also on the international flight from Montreal down to Dallas. It was almost empty. I've never seen anything like it. I hope you're all taking the necessary precautions to keep yourself safe from this virus which is spreading rapidly around the world. Every other time I've departed Montreal heading back to the States, these check-in counters are just packed. You can see most of the terminals are turned off. Again, this is the quietest I have ever seen this airport. This is inside the terminal at Montreal Airport. I normally leave at this time of the morning when I go back to the US on previous trips and this part of the terminal is just packed. But at the moment, all the shops are closed and the place is almost deserted. Airlines flight to Dallas-Fort Worth, operate as American Eagle. As you're getting settled, please place your personal items either completely under the seat in front of you or in an overhead bin. 
small lightweight items may be placed in the seat pocket.